finally ready to try this out. Now I do have a 14 inch analog monitor that can take composite colour input, uh, but it's a bit of a beast to lug downstairs. And in the principle of go big or go home, I'm gonna try it out on this um, flat screen, digital 55 inch TV. See if it copes with the signal. It might not, uh, but I have had success with other retro gear on the composite input. So let's give it a go. See what happens. I've got the meteoroids cartridge in again. Yep, that oh it's not a great signal, but it's kind of okay. There's all sorts of interesting kind of artifacts to do with the character positions. So it's got like sort of banding around every character, but that could just be the quality of the video output that it uh, it puts out. But uh, we are only talking composite, so we're getting a bit of kind of dot crawl and stuff there. But for modern monitor, not so bad. Let's give it a go. My name, Richard. Enter skill level. I think we used five before, didn't we? Mode, I have no idea what they are. We'll try you up. Oh, then we go straight in. So where are we? Uh, it doesn't seem to be doing much on this. Oh, yeah. oh is it working? Oh, yeah, I had the joystick upside down. So there's my ship going around. And I'm dead. Oh, got 40 points though. Still got the buzz on the audio here. So I guess that's an artifact of the computer, rather than it being the tuning of the carry that we had in the past. Because it's coming straight from the audio as well. Ah, oh, well there we go. I scored 50, 60 on level 5. Right, let's try the next thing, which is a cassette game. I've got dug out, uh, got loads of cassette recorders. Every time I buy a retro computer, it seems to come with a cassette deck. Uh, but I have had success with this one in the past, which came with my Mattel Aquarius, so it's a dedicated data recorder. So I'm hoping it's been optimised for um, the output. Um, I've certainly successfully loaded programmes into the Aquarius for it. So let's give it a go. That's all connected up, and we've, I've picked out Transylvania Tower, a spectacular 3D maze adventure for the Dragon 32. I definitely like the sound of a spectacular maze adventure. Sea load tower, it says on there. Right. Uh, oh, I need to turn, uh, take the meteorite cartridge out, turn it on. Uh, 16K basic, 1982. Sea load. Bundles. Right, this is where we use the um, cup of tea. This is S in the thing. Is that C key or something? I don't know. So the question is, do I pause the pause the video while this happens, or do I let you sit through it? The Aquarius data recorder has a light that flashes when it reads data. So I don't think it has any kind of audio output. I don't know if the dragon gives you the audio. Um, but that should flash when it comes up with data. It is going round, isn't it? I hear rumbling, but I don't see the counter moving. Hmm. Maybe I'll pause the video so I won't put you through all this. We'll come back when we've got some success. Well, so much for coming back when I had success. And this is the cause of the issue. It seems the uh, cassette tape has uh, managed to wrap itself around the pinch roller. So I shall need to extract that. And then may I don't know if it's a cassette or whether it's the cassette deck. Maybe I'll try a different record. I'm having moderate success in getting this out. Um, it's... Uh, tapes wrapped around the, the rubber roller that uh, pushes, I think it's a like pinch wheel against this, uh, I think it's called pinch roller, uh, I can't remember which is which. Um, what I'm doing is I'm, I've got it unplugged so it doesn't go round, but I'm half pushing the play button down and then I'm um, moving the wheel backwards with my finger with the tape. And that's uh, loosening the spool, and then I can pull out a little bit of tape at a time. And I'm hoping I may be able to 
get this out, maybe save the tape. We'll see. Okay, I'm giving up. I'm going to uh, take this apart. Alright, let's see if this helps. Oh, what a mess. Yeah. So, can we get this out with that? Uh, it'd be nice to be able to rewind this back onto the into the tape uh, cassette. I doubt this bit is going to be very healthy, but it's recorded on both sides, so I may be able to then rewind it and try loading off the other side. Maybe with a different cassette. Oh! This, ah, well that's why the counter's not working. The rubber belt, the counter is uh, driven by a rubber belt, which is turned to mush. At least everything else seems to be by gears, so, um, so everything other than the rubber belt is going to still, uh, everything other than the counter. But that explains why the counter wasn't getting round. Uh, oh, I'm going to need to clear my face. I'm seeming to have a little bit of success here of turning the, turning the wheel and pulling gently. See if it will come on. Oh yeah, that looks like it's a loop on that side. There we go. That is coming out. What is that tangle? Will the last bit come out? How is that looped round? Don't want to cut it if I don't have to. Hmm. So unfortunately, the tape has snapped. What ha seemed to happen is that part of the tape got caught in between the pinch wheel and the metal frame there and was very, very solidly um, jammed. And I tried my best to ease it out, but sadly it snapped. Might be able to um, um, rejoin the, uh, the tape with a bit of sellotape, something like that, we'll see. So on the principle that this end of the tape is history, I'm going to go back to um, a reasonable place here where it's not too damaged and then I'm just going to splice it into the leader tape and maybe we can use the other end of the, uh, um, the recording. Let's see. I've cut them both at the same angle. I've put tape on both sides and I'm going to trim it to fit. See how that works. It must be a good 30 years since I've tried to splice cassette tape. I haven't got them quite straight, but this part of the tape will hopefully never get played anyway. There's enough that I can do it on the take up spool. And here we have the culprit. This rubber washer, which is sadly split. And that should be going round that um, wheel there. So that wheel engages with the center of this drive cog and then friction turns this. And so I'd either need to get another one of that or I might be able to glue it on there. I'm not sure if that's worth a repair today. Um, I'll see if I've got another cassette deck that I can get working though, because it'd be nice to get a cassette game loaded on the Dragon. So here we have a few of my other data cassette recorders that came with various machines. I think the Alba came with my TRS-80. I can't remember which one this Bush came with. This Toshiba came with the Toshiba MSX computer. It was bundled with it in the box. I'll just try plugging this in and it seems to be working okay. So here you can see as well as the rubber going around, the take up spool is going. And the fast forward and rewind seem to work. It's got a tape counter, it's got volume control and remote socket. So let's give that one a go. And indeed here you can hear the software.
Not great, but at least it's working. Let's see what happens when we plug it into the computer. Second attempt. Load power. Let's see what happens. And off it goes. Not messing with it. And it's actually going in. Yeah, it's flashing the S in the corner. So this thing has a monitor thing. That's great. So this is designed for the data recorder. So as well as feeding the sound out through the earphone, it also put it through the speaker if you've got it in monitor mode. So that's great for um, loading programs on old computers. I wonder how long this is going to take. I'll pause for a moment. Well, that just uh, abruptly stopped um, and set off the tape, which suggests that the bit of tape that I cut off had the tail end of the program on it. And sadly, I think that tape is now dead. So let's try another program. So now I'm trying the next game, which is this, a Fantasy Fight. I have to load this up because it says 35 different screens with full colour animation. Jet Set Willy Eat Your Heart Out. 26k of pure machine code action. Choice of nine weapons and spells. So let's see if that works. It even comes with a little keyboard overlay to um, tell us what we need to do. Although well, I'm not quite sure what all those mean. And it also comes with this manual that is oh we get a loading screen excellent um so this manual which is one of the smallest print manuals i've seen this is really uh really tricky to see so it says loading time about three minutes let's come back in a bit just my cat doesn't seem particularly impressed with this noise do you dear oh, so here we've got the uh Fantasy Fight game. Seems to be a kind of like screen based exploration game. The composite video is a bit, um, a bit poorly on this screen. Maybe I should try it on an analog monitor sometime. Oh, golly. And is that an exit there? Yes, yeah, so we can go through here. I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Apparently Jet Set Willy can eat his heart out. I have never played Jet Set Willy. Um, it was, that was mainly a Spectrum game, I think, and I never really used a Spectrum. I was Amstrad, just AT Amstrad person. Oh golly, this is tough. Yes, maybe, if, maybe that's enough of that. Um, I also tried using the other joystick, it doesn't seem to um, work uh, properly, but uh, up and down works, but left and right doesn't, so I'm going to have to take that apart and uh, do a bit of investigation, hopefully fix that. Right, we've got this faulty joystick opened up, and it's basically got two potentiometers for the two axes, and I ch if I check here, that cross the pins here, Got it set on a 200k resistance range on the multimeter. And here we get, oh, I was just testing it here. Um, I was getting something out here. So we get 43k across the whole thing. And here we've got 32k. And then if I alter this, that should vary. 18k goes up to oh, 47k briefly there and back to zero there. So that's probably a 50k potentiometer. And if I check over here, so I'm getting 26k, over there 5k, over there 43k, and between these two pins as well, it's going back the other way. So 49, 43, so that is working which suggests maybe it's continuity of the wires. 
Um, this is the one where the wires came out the side and got trapped, so maybe one of those wires is broken. Put it into continuity and see what we find on the other end here. I have no idea what the pin out is. I'm, let's see if that's shielded to a ground. Yeah, did that, is the shield connected to any of those? No, okay. Let's start with this pin. Something there, or was that the ground? Okay, I'll investigate this bit further and report back with what I found. I've investigated this, um, I've worked out the pin out of that, although I could have just taken apart the, um, the DIN plug. Um, it seems the yellow cable isn't getting through, which looks like it's the common for the left right potentiometer. Um, now I've tried wiggling the cable to see if there's a break. All these cables are slightly dodgy here where they've been pinched. Um, I can't get anything through there. So what I'm gonna try and do is just gonna cut the wire, yellow wire here, check continuity um, to see if it's there, or if it's between there and there, that the break is. Uh, if it's not, then I might just have to cut back until I get to good wire. It certainly seems to be have a good connection there. So let's see what happens if we cut this one. And strip a bit here. Don't really want to cut back the cable all the way, because I have to re-solder five wires. It's a bit of a pain. Right, let's see if that has continuity to here. Doesn't look like it, so it's broken somewhere further up the cable. That's annoying. Okay, I have to deal with this. Well, I've cut back the cable a little bit. I noticed there was a pinch point here, which is probably where it was originally pinched in there. And strip back the yellow wire. And sure enough, we've got continuity. So it's somewhere in between there and there that the wire's broken. Still means I've got to resolder these wires. And I've got to choose whether I solder all the way back to there or whether I just kind of cut these cables off and solder in. I'll dig out the soldering iron and fix it. I've decided to do it properly and um, solder the wires back onto the original connectors. So I've taken this all apart. But I just thought I'd show a quick thing of how this, this gimbal works. It's very cute. Uh, it's kind of moves across like back and forwards through the two channels and then activates one or other of the potentiometers on the side. Very nice design. Time for a little soldering then. I've cut back all the wires, I've put in my strain relief knot and I've checked the continuity of all the wires before I start. So let's just do the first one here. The fire button seems to be red here. Let's uh, go. This way the other one comes off. There we go. Let's turn the new one. That was red. Make sure I remember which is which. slightly better light than this. My eyes aren't so good any longer and I find soldering uh, quite awkward. So that's all soldered up now. Not the prettiest job but um, it will do. Um, but while I was doing it, I tried to reverse engineer how this works. Because um, it's got five pins and five signals, but plus the ground. But of course, left and right and up and down are combined. But then you'd only need three pins plus the ground, and it's got five. So um, that confused me. But I kind of reverse engineered it um, from the wiring. And basically, it's black is the common or ground. Red is fire. 
then green is variable resistance for up and down with respect to the common. Yellow is variable resistance left and right with respect to the common. But then white is connected to the full travel pin um, on the um, on the both variable resistors. So you've got black on one side and white on the other side. Um, and then the green or yellow as the middle that kind of sweeps from one to the other. So that means that between black and white you get the um, the resistance of the full travel. So I'm wondering whether that's used as a kind of calibration kind of mechanism. So you know sort of um, between, so, yeah, so basically the for the green is the up down. So either they compare the up with the white and the down with the black, for instance, or they're using that as a as a comparison of the two to self calibrate and maybe kind of self center. I'm not sure exactly which. I might dig out some circuit diagrams of the computer to work it out. Uh, but yeah, but it's quite interesting. Let's put this together and test it. Back to test these. I'll switch back to the uh, Mika's cartridge because I know that uses a fire button, so I can test the fire. I suspect the fire button isn't working on this um, joystick I just repaired because I tried it with the continuity meter directly on the switch and it didn't seem to be um, going unless you have to push really hard. So it may be that this uh, replacement switch needs replacing. I'm pretty sure it is a replacement switch because it didn't seem to mount in particularly well when I tried it. So let's see if this works. Seeming zero is easy. Okay, so this is the existing jo the joystick that did seem to work before, and seems to be working. And fire as well. I've got the sound turned down, haven't I? Because it's so annoying on the other one. So this is moderately controllable. Let's try the repaired joystick. See what happens with that. Right, oh, it didn't look, seem to like having that plugged in while that is playing. Let's try resetting. Ah, seems to be permanently going down with the left. Okay, so left and right is working. But up and down is not working now. And I'll fire. Oh. If I press really hard, it looks like fire is working. Oh, up and down is some is working a bit. Oh, it looks like it's up or. Yeah, I think the calibration is maybe slightly off. Because if I've got it, ah, it's slightly working, but so that's the joystick all the way up. Actually, if I push it, if I push it hard up, then it starts. Looks like it's getting stuck. Because that's what, yeah, it's just very sensitive, maybe. So maybe it does have some kind of calibration in, and it needed to calibrate. It could be that the potentiometers were so old that they needed to be wiped a few times backwards and forwards to get an accurate reading. That seems to be working now, but fire is not doesn't seem to be working. So I do need a new button on there. So that will be for another day, I guess. Still, not bad, uh, not bad day's work. And now I've managed to find some space in my computer museum for the Dragon. It's down here in this cabinet alongside the Toshiba MSX and above my beloved Video Genie 2. 
Um, I have to get another glass shelf really, because then they can have a shelf to their own. I think the dragon deserves its own shelf. Thank you for watching this rather long video. Hope you've enjoyed it.